We will rebuild. Today's vlog is going to be about one thing and one thing only. Wasn't that a cool channel changing transition? That was all made here in house. Uh, I don't, I, I'm cheap. I didn't want to buy into Storyblocks or Adobe Stocks or any of the other stock programs. And uh, YouTube didn't really offer much. They mostly showed you a template that if you signed up for their website and became a member, you could possibly get that template. But again, I was just giving out my email address to other people that are going to try to sell me on things. And I, I'm just tired of everyone having my email. So I thought I'm already paying 20 some odd bucks a month for Premiere Pro. And it has already so many things that I can't comprehend. Phenomenal cosmic power. So I imagine there's a way that I can give the illusion of changing a channel myself without having a template or presets or plugins or... And this is what I came up with. This is how to make a channel changing effect in Premiere Pro. First thing we're going to do is take the four different things we need, which is a push button and some static and channel one, channel two. Then what we want to do is organize all of this and fix the audio levels. I'm going to go ahead and fast pace this because this is going to be different for you. All right, now that we've set the audio levels and saved it, that's also a very important step. Let's go ahead and organize it. Uh, we need seven seconds. So we're going to start here at the last frame. This line here indicates a frame. See this, we see the car. Now we see Casey, Casey Neistat. Frames. So we need seven frames. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two keep these blocked off I'm gonna go ahead and drag Casey Neistat across and then I'm gonna clip my car video I'm gonna drag the static across and now what we want to do is this is as I mentioned this indicates a frame so car this so this is the channel changing effect going to happen right here so we want the audio of the click to happen right there so here's what we got so far Ooh, isn't that nice? All right, I did forget to mention you want to go ahead and razor blade that one. And let's go ahead and drag it down just to keep things clean. So we want to keep the seven seconds for each of these clips separated from everything else. Next, let's get our effects. We will be using a total of two of them. The first is turbulent displacement. The next is transform. Once you drag all the effects onto your clip, I'm going to focus here on the first channel, the me and the car. Let's go over all the keyframes you're going to use. You're going to use a position keyframe. You're going to use a turbulent displacement amount keyframe, complexity keyframe, and also a transform skew keyframe. To set these, you want the first frame to be, well, in focus, you want it at the 1920, 1080. You want it there to take up the whole screen there at the very beginning. For the middle part, you want it one third of the way up. And for the last frame, you want it out of frame altogether. That does it for the position keyframes. Let's move on to the turbulent keyframes. Uh, actually, before we go into that, we do want to change some settings. We want to change this to horizontal displacement. And then we want to change pinning to none. You want no pinning. As far as the keyframes, you want to set a keyframe at 50 there on the first frame and with a complexity of 1. For the next frame, you want to move the amount up to 4, 3, 500 because you want that little bit of effect there. For the second one, you really want to escalate things. You want to go negative. You want to go the opposite route. This freaking sucks. This keyframe. Uh, a positive, so I want 2000, and then we set the complexity there at 5. So the complexity you'll notice affects the, here watch, see how it's not so wavy, super wavy? So that will help the, the static effect that we're trying to create here. Uh, this frame, again, go negative, then positive. Now we're lessening this because actually what we're going to do is we're going to copy all of this and paste it to our second channel. This will make things a lot easier for, for us. 
that does it for the turbulent displacement. Let's move on to the skew. So the first frame for the skew, we want to do negative two. For the next frame, we want to do a negative eight. And we want to leave it at that negative eight up until this last frame. There. And then it's going to go to negative two. So again, we're really doing this because we're going to copy and paste these attributes uh, onto the second channel. So that does it for the transform skew. Let's go over how we copy these attributes and apply it to the second channel. CJ1 is me in the car, so we're going to go ahead and hit Control C. We're going to move to the KC Neistat clip and right click and go to Paste Attributes. Here in Paste Attributes, you want to remove the motion. So we're only using the turbulent and transform effects. That's it. Once that is done, we want to go to the last frame here. We want to set a keyframe for position because we want it to return back to this setting. Uh, we're going to go to the middle for this position. We're going to move it here, one third of the way down. And then for the last frame, we're going to just move it out of frame altogether. And that does it for the channel change effect. All right, if you like that, please like the video, comment down below. And if I successfully teach you how to do this, go ahead and subscribe for more later on.